Hi, Nesh Nikolic here. Today's question for Ask a Psychologist is, I'm studying a lot and before every semester I find all of my lectures and go through the notes. I get lots of stress and anxiety before the exam time and this is exacerbated by English being my second language. I had an exam on Friday and because of my stress I didn't do very well. Uh, if I wasn't stressed I'd get all the answers right. Uh, I'm a slow writer and reader because I always try and understand everything very well. I'm very sad at the moment because my exam, uh, which I revised for and worked really hard on, um, turned out to be a big mess. Exams are awfully, awfully stressful for a lot of people. They, 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 they turn out to be these fight or flight experiences where someone's heart's racing, they get the sweats, they can't concentrate, they can't think, you know, their, their, their focus is off. And very good reason for that. When someone's in a really strong fight or flight response, the last thing they really need to be doing is having a lot of cognitive power. Uh, so their prefrontal cortex, their frontal lobes don't need to be working very well. They really need to be thinking about how they can survive um, through fleeing or, or getting into battle. Hence why people also don't go out and feel hunger. You know, their appetite goes away. They certainly don't need to you know, have sex and procreate because they don't, they're not sure if they're going to survive. So really what we're trying to do to settle the, the uh, stress response is do some down regulation strategies or, or try and bring ourselves to, to, to be a bit more grounded. So what I would suggest is doing some really uh, sort of preemptive and, and probably also during the, the, the examination period controlled breathing. A very simple technique in psych psychology that recognizes that if we go out and actively slow down our breath, slow down our breathing cycles, <clears throat> what will also happen is our heart rate will come down. As you can imagine, if you are going out and breathing, let's say 15, 20 cycles uh, a minute, so you're breathing short and shallow, quite rapid, your heart will be following that pace as well. If you're breathing really slowly, so you take an in-breath, you hold it for a moment and then you breathe out. If you might get to six cycles a minute or say even get down to four cycles a minute, as you can imagine, your heart rate will slow down immensely as well. And that obviously goes out and helps with moving blood flow back to your prefrontal cortex, which is where you do all your planning, your organizing, problem solving. So controlled breathing is very important. Now here's just a couple of quick tips as to how to go out and do this. I'd suggest that you breathe through your nose. The reason why is your nostrils are naturally uh, restricted. If you take a breath through your mouth, you go, <gasps> you can take it all in really, really quickly and it doesn't go out and help uh, to slow that process down. The reason why we want to slow it down is so that air that comes in and surrounds your lungs has an opportunity to be uh, processed and the oxygen out of the air can enter your blood flow. So you're breathing through your nose, quite gently, um, nothing major to be doing there. Just, just try and take it slow and gentle. You hold the breath as you naturally would. Don't try and hold it, hold it over an extended period of time or anything like that. And when you're breathing out, breathe out through your mouth. And the reason why is so you can restrict it. Imagine that you're breathing out through a, a um, straw. You might be blowing out going. And so you can blow out through you know, an extended period of time. So one cycle would be a slow breath in through your nostrils, natural hold, and then out breath through your mouth, extending it very gently over time. Now if you do this over say three to five minutes you'll find that your breathing will go from short and shallow and rapid down to long breaths that are deep in nature, are settling and go out and help to expel the carbon dioxide that might be getting caught up um, in your system getting you feeling agitated and contributing to the fight or flight response. Another quick tip actually 
you can also count backwards from 100 in multiples of 7. Um, how this works is that when we apply cognitive strain on our, on our brains, we actually force and or we ask our brain to go out and, and process um, you know, some, some level of difficulty. And in doing so, we need to go out and engage the prefrontal cortex. So blood flow is forced there to go out and do that. So you know, counting from 100 down to, you know, well, I think it gets to like two or minus five or whatever it might be, um, down in sevens. So it'd be 100, that will be 93, 80, uh, six, um, 79, and so on. So a couple of quick tips. Um, settle yourself before the exam. Practice that even uh, during the lead up. And I would also say even during the exam, you can do that. So good luck with your next exam and I hope it works out well.